Bubble Fox, bewitching dancer and member of the Fated Four, Mizutsune is one of the most elegant monsters in the series, delicate in nature, beautiful in colour, and adorned with ornate fins. If Mizutsune is a show-off, this is because all of the ones seen and hunted in-game are males in their breeding season, which may influence much of what we know about them. What is unique to the male sex, and what can we extrapolate about the females and the species overall? Let's take a shot at going through Mizutsune's ecology and find out. Perhaps Mizutsune's signature gimmick is its bubble foam. By all accounts, bubble foam is a viscous and incredibly slippery material Mizutsune produce at great volume in a short space of time, often working it into a lather and coating larger areas with it too, and it can also be blown into a bubble as well. The best analogue for this in nature is without doubt the slime of the hagfish, famous for the volume created and its slipperiness. How do the hagfish do it, and what could this suggest about how Mizutsune does it? Hagfish themselves can create huge amounts of slime seemingly instantly, and the trick is that they're more adding an ingredient to water to create the slime, rather than producing the finished product themselves. Hagfish slime shouldn't really be compared to the mucus of other animals, but rather chains of very tightly wound proteins that fire out of it when stressed. The proteins then act like a sieve that slows down water passing through it, and the end product is still over 99% seawater. The protein threads are tiny, less than 1% of the width of a human hair, but between 10 and 17 centimeters in length, so large numbers of these tiny threads can be easily stored in glands on the body, before making a huge mass of slime when fired out as the threads expand up to 10,000 times their bundled size, in just a fraction of a second when fired out. The slime is also very dilute, and this is what allows them to make up to 400 times their volume of it. The fact it functions like a net is also what makes it very hard to get off, as hagfish slime isn't actually sticky, it's instead very soft. So with all of this, it does seem like a very good analogous fit for Mizutsune's bubble foam. It's very slippery, and when coating a surface, it seems difficult to get rid of it. Similarly, the explanations of how hagfish can make a huge amount of slime do seem to fit with how Mizutsune can produce prodigious amounts of bubble foam as well. A few caveats do exist though, and that is the formation of bubbles. This may be explained partly by how Mizutsune expels the foam from its body. It appears to have glands in its mouth that produce the foam as it exhales, creating a bubble. Considering how little foam is actually needed and how much of it is water, it may combine a tiny amount of the protein threads with saliva or water stored in the body to create a bubble. As said, hagfish slime is comparable to a mesh of proteins over a gel, and the bubble foam may make a finer mesh to help trap air in the form of bubbles for their easy creation. Similarly, in expelling the foam from the body itself, like the hagfish, Mizutsune is likely covered in glands along its torso and tail to produce the proteins to mix the water with. Mizutsune is clearly able to produce these directly outside of water. One, this could be Mizutsune selecting for damp areas where there's plentiful condensed water on or in the substrate for it to mix with. Or this may be one of the reasons for Mizutsune's brush-like tail. The fur-like fibres are described as absorbent and may be uniquely adapted to hold water. So after a dip, Mizutsune carries a supply of water with it to create bubble foam in emergencies that can be replenished with water afterwards by a visit to the nearest water body. When in water itself, Mizutsune can likely produce incredible and hagfish amounts of bubble foam. And in a rare moment for carved descriptions, the claim that the pure fluid can turn a swamp into a bubble bath may not be that much of an exaggeration. But with all that, what is this bubble foam actually for? The answer seems to be to repel predators, and it's unknown if females also produce the bubble foam to the same extent, but there is some reasoning to it being primarily a male trait. If you're constantly slathering a trail of proteins behind you when you're walking over land, for animals, you're effectively leaving a constant stream of information about yourself. Other animals will be able to tell where you're going and how long ago you were here, as well as information about your condition and hormonal status. It can be used as a notice board to females that you're in season, 
and to other males that you're too tough to tangle with. In a behaviour known as olfactory eavesdropping though, it can also be used by other species to track you down for their own means, typically food. It's unknown what the evolutionary root of the bubble foam was, but it may well have at least started from male Mizutsune leaving a trail of hormones when in the breeding season, that in turn keyed predators into its location, as well as those of the intended females. Bubble foam may have then arisen so that in the events of an attempted predation, Mizutsune had a decent shot at escaping. It's worth noting too, signalling features that make you more vulnerable aren't rare. A lot of the actions both male and female animals make to attract mates can also attract predators with the consequence of getting eaten. Even with the bubble foam in the breeding season, Mizutsune may experience spikes of mortality from increased attraction from predators. Not only may they follow the males to eat them, but considering the males are also searching for females, this may increase the encounter rates with females too. But who is eating Mizutsune? Mizutsune is one of the smaller apex level monsters in game, and is a comparatively gracile animal, so both males and females may be vulnerable to a good number of the large predators. In game, we do see it has a few potential predators from Turf Wars. Zenoga in particular may be a frequent threat. Its preferred habitat of areas like the Misty Peaks, of well-watered mountainous habitats, may give it a strong distribution overlap with Mizutsune, Plus, its strong claws to help it scale rocky terrain may also allow it better purchase than other monsters in the bubble-foamed areas, as well as affording it some ability to restrain Mitsutsune. Bubble foam may actually provide a significant repellent here though, more so than against other monsters. Mizutsune does grapple back to Zenoga, and presumably cover it with the foam. This is likely immensely hard to get off, and may jeopardise Zenoga's relationship with the Thunderbugs. They may struggle to fly, stay on or land after a coating, and may even be repelled or even suffocated by it. So a Zenoga that enters a prolonged struggle with a Mizutsune may risk weakening itself considerably regardless of its victory. In short, better to cut your losses early and go and eat a Gargwa instead. Astalos is another example and Mizutsune does seem at risk to true flying wyverns. Whilst it does manage to jet Astalos out the sky, this quickly turns south for Mizutsune when it's knocked down and mauled. The wetland habitats Mizutsune prefers aren't as abundant in volant predatory wyverns as some others, and with bubble foam presumably not coating its back as well, Mizutsune may well be somewhat more vulnerable to aerial attacks than others. Said areas are well watered and vegetated though, and Mizutsune may prefer thicker areas or ones adjacent to water bodies for cover or an aquatic getaway from such potential predators. But taking to the water may not always be a foolproof method, and in some cases may well be an out of the frying pan and into the fire. In estuarine areas where they may meet, or if young or hungry Lagiacrus swim up river to areas like the flooded forest, then it may well provide a major threat to Mizutsune. This may be a key reason for the bubble foam too. As said, hagfish slime is a good anti-predator mechanism, but it's primarily for gill-using predators, as the thick slime clogs their openings. Against other animals, it's not as effective, and hagfish can still fall prey to them, so for more typical predators, you'd likely need a different function. This may be why Mizutsune's bubble foam is so slippery. If grabbed by a Lagiacrus around the torso or tail, the glands likely make it very hard for the Lagiacrus to hold on to a wriggling, slippery Mizutsune. Similarly, the potential and forceful actions Lagiacrus may take to kill large prey, like death rolling or shaking it, may only send it flying out of its grasp. This may be overall effective, but not completely foolproof, and if Lagiacrus manages to grab one by the head especially, it may well be lights out. Mizutsune's habitats of mountain and forest streams may well also put it in the same areas as another large leviathan, Almadron. The two may not necessarily compete, as Mizutsune seems to be primarily a piscivore, with some flexibility, whereas Almadron is more likely a generalist, and much more willing to take larger prey. But whilst they may show niche partitioning in their diet, this doesn't exclude Mizutsune as a potential prey item for Almadron. The bubble foam may of course help escape here too, 
but with three points of contact with its reasonably robust jaw, hooked claws, and especially its grasping tail, Almadron can potentially present a very serious threat too, especially in drier months when aquatic prey likely become much more scarce. Artwork also suggests brute wyverns like Devil Joe as potential threats, although perhaps considerably lesser ones than the other three. With their comparatively slow speed, many brutes would likely struggle to catch a mazitsune before it can escape back to water. And as the artwork shows, said pursuit would likely lead it straight into the bubble foam and misfortune. If they caught one, they may face similar struggles to Lagiacrus to restrain one with a slippery bubble foam. But it is also possible the exaggerated tusks of Anjanath, or the overlapping teeth of Devil Joe, could well be effective. As I did say, if I think Joe's teeth are good for anything, it'd be restraining slippery prey. And they do resemble the teeth of juvenile Port Jackson sharks that are adept at eating soft, slippery seafood, before graduating to mollusks in later life. Who prevails between Mazutsune's bubble foam and Devil Joe's jaws is anyone's guess. But as said, it's unlikely for a large brute to be able to make a successful capture due to the foam. As well as bubble foam, Mizutsune is also seen to use its water jet against attackers too. As well as just being irritating, this may well be a portable way of firing the bubble foam. And if not, it could still be something of a deterrent. Individual animals already experienced with Mizutsune, and unwilling to get foamed again, may not really want to stick around to see if the water jet is actually just water or foam. And for more timid or intelligent species and willing to go to all the slippery hassle of killing Mazitsune, the water jet may serve as a cheaper alternative to try and scare them off. After all, even if it's very dilute, its bubble foam is still a protein it synthesizes from its body. Scaring someone off by bluffing the foam, rather than having to create a lot of it in a prolonged encounter, would likely be the less expensive option for Mizutsune. For Mizutsune's general ecology, its association with riverine areas and general law do seem to place it as a piscivore, and the bulk of Mizutsune's diet is likely fish. Rather than swift pursuit predation like a sea lion or dolphin, Mizutsune may take a slower approach, foraging in the more shallow waters using its incredible sensory organs. Indeed, with the morphology of its tail and the lack of webbed feet, Mizutsune does actually seem something of a poor swimmer. Like a good number of real and fictitious animals, it may be entirely water dependent, but not especially competent in deep water, where it may be even more vulnerable to attack from large aquatic predators. Rather, with its hooked claws, its feet are likely adapted to keeping it securely fastened to the riverbed in fast-flowing channels, so it can continue to make precise movements of the head whilst foraging. Another adaptation to keep them stable in flowing water may be denser limb bones. Mainly aquatic animals or foragers have or had this adaptation, like hippos, marine iguanas, and some spinosaurids. Considering the leviathans in general are a mostly aquatic family, it may well be that this is an ancestral trait that Mazitsune already possessed and retains, despite its more terrestrial lifestyle. Mizutsune has an array of very delicate fins and barbels across its head too, and these likely serve as sensitive sensory organs to help Mizutsune hunt in the wooded streams. This may be another ancestral leviathan trait Mizutsune has retained from its family. As crocodilians, who seem relatively unfrilled, and may be reasonable analogues for leviathans, or at least some of them, actually have precise sensory organs in the scales of their mouths. As well as pH and temperature, these can also detect changes in pressure in the water to help them forage in murky environments. Mizutsune's fins may just be a more extreme example of something similar. As Mizutsune selected smaller and often hidden prey in shallow water, it developed more precise sensory organs to help it find it. This may be more similar to the vibrissae of animals like seals and otters, who use theirs extensively in foraging and often struggle without them. As well as touch, the barbels of animals like catfish can also taste, so Mizutsune may well experience a multitude of stimuli all through its facial features. This and its chosen habitats may also make Mizutsune more of a generalist too. Fish may be an important part of its diet, and the bulk of it in a lot of regions, but amphibians and invertebrates may also be snapped up as it trolls the riverbeds. 
As a caveat on Soul Seer, this may be an example of just how sensitive the fins are. There are experiments done with seals that show that they can still detect swimming objects without visual stimuli purely from their whiskers. But this is in water, a much more viscous medium. This would require far more sensitive organs to do the same in air. But that is seemingly what Mizutsune do. The bubbles are made so that when popped, the shockwave created in the air alerts the Mitsuzune of an intruder's presence, almost like a weird sort of Rube Goldberg version of echolocation, but with pressure waves instead of sound. It's also not so far-fetched for an animal with excellent other senses to survive without eyes. There is indeed a record of an adult female wild boar surviving for some time after being completely blinded. Considering Mizutsune would barely need its eyes for foraging, it's not difficult to imagine it being able to survive blind. But this may also be why Soul Seer is so aggressive, often like other deviants. It may be able to detect other animals coming still, but only when they're near enough to being right on top of it. As a result, it may panic and go on the offensive due to being caught short, and away from water to dive into or cover to hide in. As a whole, sight may not be the most important sense for Mizutsune, especially when compared to touch and smell. Most of its foraging and communication with its own species is done with these two senses, and a lot of official media often portrays Mizutsune as active at night. A lot of its aquatic prey may also be most active at night too, and most predatory flying wyverns may rest at this time as well. So it may not be too large a leap to suggest Mizutsune as a primarily nocturnal animal. It's unknown if Mizutsune's eyes have adapted for night vision, or if it just uses other senses to navigate primarily instead. But considering the role colour may play in its mating displays, its night vision may be not too impressive, with its vision being mainly cone-based. So really, for all of the senses for Soul Seer to lose, sight may well have been the least important for it. Mizutsune may also have a few tricks up its sleeve for other potential prey too. Mizutsune's water jet may be for a predatory role, and similar to that of an archerfish. Archerfish are well known for their habit of jetting water out of their mouths to blast prey off branches in their mangrove homes, and are very precise and skilled hunters with how they calculate their shots despite the refraction through the water's surface. Mizutsune may not hunt from underneath the water surface, but it may share something with archerfish in that it can control how strong the jet is in accordance with the target. Larger prey like lizards are given the full force the fish can manage. Smaller ones like flies are given a lower effort zap for a lower effort target. Mizutsune may take such talents to blast assorted life in riparian habitats, like amphibians, birds, wing drakes or primates out of the trees or off rock faces, for when aquatic prey is running low or the individual is just hungry. In any wingdrake species that nest colonially near water, Mizutsune may win itself a bonanza and jet chicks out of the nests for a seasonal feast, akin to how crocodilians will take good advantage of wader nesting colonies. As said, the jet can also be potentially used to deter predators, and Mizutsune may have a full force option to try and dissuade other monsters from attacking. Finally, what features of Mizutsune are exclusively male? What do the females look like, and what can this tell us about the behaviours of both sexes? There is a sketch of a female Mizutsune. Andromia Raptor has helpfully outlined a lot of the features that seem male exclusive. Whilst the sketch does depict the female Mizutsune with notable claws, the same sketches of the male show them as far more pronounced, so whilst the species may have strong hooked claws to keep them stable in fast flowing water, it does seem like the large sickle claws on the front feet are male exclusive. Sexually selective weaponry isn't rare, of course, and for males that are unwilling to back down from displays and bluffing, the claws are likely used in fierce wrestling matches like monitor lizards. Considering the length of such claws and the lack of heavy male armour, such combat could potentially result in bloody wounds and even death if one male doesn't back down. Another difference is the comparative lack of purple fur on the females too. The hind legs are naked in comparison, and the torso is much less covered. If the fur lines up loosely with the bubble foam glands, then this does seem to show that females can still produce it, just not as extensively. 
As suggested, this may be due to the males needing much more extensive covering due to their extensive production of it in the breeding season. In females, it may serve much more as a purely anti-predator mechanism, with sufficient covering that females are still slippery and hard to handle when grabbed, but not so much that they're leaving foam trails like the males. Females may still use it for some chemical signalling though, and may rub their furred underside on certain landmarks to mark territory, or seasonal mating availability, much like the pasting action undertaken by the hyenidae. The fins are also greatly reduced in the female, and with little other reason for only one of the sexes to have them, this strongly suggests that the fins are primarily for display. Mizutsune can flush blood into them to turn them a deep red, and it's possible their size and colour are indicative of the health and maturity of the individual male, so they may have an important role in communicating the size and health of the males to each other. A lot of mating and territoriality behaviour is ritualised, and there are often numerous steps before physical combat, which may itself also be ritualised before it can escalate into something properly hostile or even fatal. Displays like parallel walks may be common, essentially showing off the lateral side of your body to prove how big you are, and why you would win the fight if it happened. Such displays are common across a lot of terrestrial vertebrate taxa, like ungulates, lizards, and big cats. And for a species like Mizutsune, which has a clear display structure best displayed from a lateral view, the males may do a lot of showing off to settle a winner. Only when two determined and evenly matched males don't back down are the hooked claws actually drawn. Once a winner is decided and the mating done, Male Mizutsune will stick around to at least partially help rear the offspring. Not much more is known here. The sketch shows the male with one chick, but it's unknown how big litter sizes are. Similarly, it's unknown how long the males stay. It would presumably take at least a few years for young Mizutsune to reach dispersal size, considering they receive parental care. So whether a male sticks it out the whole way through, or if they leave at the start of the next breeding season, is unknown. The role of the larger, better armed and more aggressive male is also seemingly to help repel numerous predators in the surrounding area. Overall, Mizutsune has a fresh wave of mysteries with this additional information, but if nothing else, it can be added to the monsters that show parental care to their young. So for my thoughts on Mitsu, I'd say I quite like it. It's nice to get a garish, flashy monster with reasonable lore behind the garish flashiness as well as general ecology that makes it more believable. The fight is alright too, though despite its rank, Mizutsune's never really been that hard, even in Generations Ultimate. It and Gamoth are definitely the easier half of the Fated Four, and I'd probably posit Mizutsune as the least powerful Apex rank monster in general. Mizutsune's theme fits it like a glove, and is also one of the most recognisable tracks of the series, as well as just being a very enjoyable fight theme no matter what rendition it's in. Like a lot of others, I wouldn't mind seeing it in a world-esque game. Outside of a turf war with Zenoga and Astalos, Sunrise didn't really give a whole lot of new information about Mizutsune in general. Mizutsune's role as a monster that is only seasonally a hazard could be an interesting thing to delve into if seasons ever return. And this, as well as its considerable beauty and suggested role in some cultures, could also make it another good candidate to explore relationships between humans and monsters in-game. I'd probably say it has the most potential of the Fated Four in this regard, too. I also find it nicely ironic that Mizutsune's gear is flowery, pink, and traditionally feminine, despite these things being the sign of a red-blooded, testosterone-loaded peak of masculinity for the actual monster itself. A lot like peacocks in our world. Overall, maybe not in my top 20, but not far off it. A decent monster, and maybe a hair behind Gamoth as my favourite monster of the Fated Four as well. Thanks for watching, and as ever, a big thanks to all my patrons, especially to Erengar Steiny and Venomenon. There's a link in the description for anyone else who wants to chip in. I'm appreciative of any amount. Cheers too to Dromeo Raptor for the Mizutsune diagram, and to Comet for putting forth the Archerfish idea. One thing as well, I noticed a few people requested monsters that had recently been covered in videos, and there's been a lot of talk from big content creators about general algorithm crappiness, even with subscribed channels not getting their videos shown. So maybe just check back every now and then on the channel. I do try to aim for roughly every two weeks, 
roughly. But thanks to all of those who have already subbed, and if you enjoy this video, I'm appreciative of all likes, subscriptions, and share with others who might enjoy this stuff too. To address some points of past videos, yeah, nothing on Rust or Ambaros. A lot of the third gen subspecies weren't great lore-wise, and Rust is maybe one of the most prevalent in literally flying in the face of the established canon for the base species. Plus, why did they think the desert of all places was the place to put it? The Bloss Wyverns already fill that role. It's perhaps the only biome thus far that already had its own giant herbivores. Overall, ew. Also it seems a lot of you liked Durambaros's helicopter sweep a lot more than I did, so power to you for that. There was some great talk regarding the Myr as well. Dawn Tyrant Eo suggested that the Myr Queen may just be the dominant female, who is significantly larger than the rest due to said dominance, and who co-ops the others into taking care of her young, akin to mole rats and meerkats among other cooperative breeders, a behaviour which primates will sometimes indulge in. It could also be possible just as some species have different types of male for different breeding strategies, so too do the myrrh have different types of female for the same purposes. Maxman101100 suggested that there may be a lack of male-male competition for females, and this explains the large female size. Myrrh may live more in a group for threat dilution and protection than an established social unit like base primates too. So that was the Mizutsune video, requested by quite a few, so hopefully it delivered. I'll hopefully see you next time, and many of you should recognise the winner of the Patreon poll.